Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and part two of the Keithley 2306 repair video. Now you're not seeing things, I've not mixed up the footage. What I'm actually doing is preparing a nickel plating bath. And the reason for that is the old brackets here that held on the transistors inside the 2306 I really wasn't happy with them yes I took sandpaper to them and got rid of all that corrosion that was on them but they're all pretty much scratched up and I don't really uh, think they're really good enough I want to do a better job so what I decided to do is try nickel plating them as they were originally because obviously I've rubbed that off getting rid of the corrosion so what I'm doing here is I'm currently preparing a nickel plating bath so that I can drop these into the solution and actually nickel plate them. What that consists of is some distilled vinegar, some kosher sea salt to make the solution conductive and at the moment I've got two sacrificial nickel anodes that I've got on both the anode and the cathode at the moment which I'm using to prepare the solution. What, I'm, what I've got is my power supply across the two anodes uh, running at about two amps uh, constant current and what I'm trying to do at the moment as you can see this one here is bubbling away nicely I'm hoping to get nickel off of that plate into the solution and then I can replace that one with the two brackets and hopefully nickel in the solution will then go on to the actual brackets. So I should know when this is ready when the solution turns a little bit green and as you can see it's definitely going that way. Okay about half an hour later you can see the solution's getting quite green now that means that the nickel has come off the anode it's now in the solution and obviously it's started to now coat the actual cathode. So what I can do as a test right now is replace that cathode with a little bit of copper wire. And let's just see if I can nickel plate this copper wire. So I'm just going to do this live. So here we go. And I'll just bend it over and I'll just put it in. And it's bubbling away nicely. Let's put it in for a few seconds and take it out and I don't know if you can see that but there is a definite difference between the original copper there and this here is a lot more silver looking that's the nickel plating so I think I'm ready now to put my brackets in and let's see how well they nickel plate So I'll take out the cathode here. In fact, I think I'll double up this cathode because it's probably nickel plated itself again. There. There we go. Now to get it even, I have to make sure that it's aligned as much as possible. If I have it round like that, this end here will be nickel plated more than the other end, I believe. So let me just try and put that in there. That'll do. And attach the power. And I'll leave that running for a couple of minutes and I'll come back. Well, turns out I'd missed a stage, so I actually started again. I took the wire wheel to my original bracket, as you see here. This one hasn't been nickel plated yet, and also the wire brush. And I've made it as nice as possible, obviously down to the raw metal almost. And I've nickel plated one, and here it is here. And you can tell. Yes, on camera, I'm not sure what it looks like, but you can definitely see there's a nickel plating covering that bracket so hopefully it should be corrosion resistant so i'll go way off and do the rest of them and get them fitted back on the 2306 well there we go there's three that i've done so far and there's three that i've cleaned up and are ready to go in and definitely you can see that these have been nickel plated okay it's a very very thin plating but hopefully it will guard against any corrosion in the future 
So I'll go away and do these three now, and then I'll put them all back into the 2306. Now before I fit the new brackets to the actual transistors etc, I have decided to actually replace these insulators, because as you'll see, they're pretty cracked up, I mean they're falling apart, and they've got holes right through them, and I think that's where this little nub on the bracket itself actually sits there and it's kind of worn away and broken up that insulator. So I do actually have some that I bought off of eBay. These will do the job nicely. So I'll go away and fit those and fit the new brackets. And on the main analog board, these ones here and are in a pretty similar state also. They're just all hard and crusty. So I'll replace them as well. And there's the old ones all removed. Well, there we go, all in place and looking good. So I'll just uh, measure them, make sure there's no short circuits onto the heatsink, and I'll reassemble the boards back into the case. Okay, it's time to turn my attention to the actual VFD. Now I do want to replace it because it is rather dim, but interestingly, if you look along these solder connections here, where the two boards join together, this has been recently re-soldered, and They've not made a very good job of it, because the underside here, if you can see that, there is a couple of broken pads there. So I think that somebody's uh, possibly replaced this VFD or had it taken apart in the past. And actually, if you look closely, uh, I probably won't be able to see it, but down in there, there's an electrolytic capacitor and the side of it is melted and I just think that's somebody going a little bit loose and fast with the uh, soldering iron there so I suspect maybe there's been a problem or the more I think about it the more I think this actual 2306 is a bit of a bitsa unit in other words it's made up of the remnants of maybe two or three 2306s and this is the runt end of the litter but anyway I've got myself a replacement VFD and actually I didn't need to go very far to acquire this one. I managed to get it from Etron itself because they've got an office in the UK. So I've got this new VFD so I'm going to desolder this old VFD and solder in the new one in its place onto the interface board. So there's the old display removed and there's the new one. Now it's got a slightly different part number. It's UW2J as opposed to W2J. And I'm assured by the manufacturer that the U just means it's the second generation. It's a redesigned version. And looking at the old display, as I mentioned earlier, this electrolytic capacitor here, this aluminium cap, has definitely been replaced. Somebody's just hacked it on. And there's a ceramic capacitor over here, looks like it's been soldered as well. So somebody's made some sort of an attempt at repairing this display, I think, and made a bit of a meal of it. Well, there we go. That's all back together again. Display fitted, uh, further renovation work done on the actual circuit boards, and we're ready for a power up. Let's see what the display looks like now. And yes, that's a lot brighter. Perfect. Okay, so I've got the unit hooked up. Now the basics of each channel is that it is a power supply, but it is also a DVM, i.e. a voltmeter. So on the terminals on the back, I've hooked up my electronic load off camera and my multimeter here on that power supply output. And I've also got my PDVS2 Mini hooked up to that DVM input. So the purpose behind the power supply is to do charging and the purpose behind the DVM is to monitor battery voltage. That way the unit's got full control and full visibility of everything that's going on when you're charging or simulating batteries. So I've got it hooked up to the rear terminals at the back. I've got the power supply set to 15 volts and I've set the maximum current to 5 amps. So it's on at the moment and you can see 15 volts in the power supply and I'm getting exactly 15 volts on my BM786 over here. So I'll turn on the electronic load, load up the power supply just to make sure everything's working there. 
Now it is a 45 watt power supply. However, it's capable of 15 volts and five amps maximum. So at 15 volts, I can only go up to three amps. So I'm gonna load it up to that full three amps and we'll see if everything is okay. So I'll just reach over. So there we go, loaded it up to three amps and we're still managing 15 volts as we can see here. So channel one's working great there. So at the same time, I'll now move over to the DVM input and we'll monitor that. There it is there. And the PDVS2 mini is currently set to zero volts. So I'm getting around about zero there. So let's go up to one. And yeah, it's a little bit low. Let's go all the way up to 10. I think the input's capable of 30 volts, but uh, PDVS2 mini can only go up to 10 volts. And yeah, it's not too bad. So just to check, 9.954, I'll turn off the load on the power supply just to see if it has any effect on that DVM input. It's electronic load off, and not really, so looks like channel 1 is working great. Now obviously I'll go over and check channel 2, make sure it's working in exactly the same way, I've no doubt it will be. However, I was actually hoping to hook up the PDVS2 Mini and use this unit to simulate the batteries and charge the PDVS2 Mini. However, looks like I can't do that. The PDVS2 Mini needs a minimum of 18 volts for charging and this unit can only go up to 15 volts maximum. So, sorry, I can't do that. So I'm going to have to try and find some other device that I can used to fully test the uh, 2306. There is a lot going on in the 2306. Most of the settings etc are available through GPIB so it's actually quite a big job to go and hook all that up and to explore everything about the 2306. So I'm not going to do that right now. I will do at some point in the future when I find a device that I actually need to monitor properly the charging and the batteries etc. So I think that'll do it for this video. I think the 2306 is all nicely, fully restored, fully repaired, and I'm looking forward to using it in the future. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And if you want to help me more directly, then you can always donate via PayPal or Patreon in the links below. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel. Check them out, and thanks for watching.